Leveling up. Extreme business growth through raising your game. When what was once extraordinary becomes ordinary, you know you've leveled up. I'm hearing of a lot of business owners being overwhelmed. I'm hearing a lot of people saying they haven't got enough time to do all the things they need to do. Obviously, business right now is difficult for many small businesses. Add to that the fact that many of you I know are homeschooling. Add to that the fact that there's so many other pressures on you right now and distractions right now. I get it. The life of an entrepreneur, the life of a business owner is chaotic and hectic. There is always more that you could do, should do, than you can possibly ever do. And I get it. I get why you might drift into overwhelm. And I get it why you might be saying, I don't have enough time to X, Y, Z. All of the wonderful, amazing information that I pass on to you on this podcast, for example. I know I get it. You haven't got enough time to look at your sales Maybe not enough time to look at your marketing issues. Maybe you haven't got enough time to hire, to recruit, enough time to train someone else to do what you need them to do. Maybe you haven't got enough time to go out there and source the right systems or the right processes. I get it, I get it, I get it. However, if we don't make time for those things, make time for ourselves, our own personal development, take time to relax, to wind down, to be with the people that really matter the most to us, to be the mother, the husband, the mum, the dad that you want to be then life is going to start to slip through your fingers. It's going to get more pressure, more chaotic. You're going to feel more guilt. You're going to feel more like you're out of control. And it's going to spiral down and down and down. Therefore, if you are feeling that way, this episode is specifically speaking to you. And the answer might be to start to live your life like a 1950s fat cat. Welcome to the Leveling Up Podcast with me, Joe Swift from Bigger, Brighter, Boulder. The Leveling Up Podcast is here to give you the personal development, the entrepreneurial development and the business growth that you, the ambitious business owner, desires. I'm here to give you the inspiration, the motivation, but above all else, to challenge your aspirations to take you and your business to the next level. Don't forget, please subscribe to this podcast so that you never miss an episode. Living your life like a 1950s fat cat does not mean you have to somehow go back in time, become overweight, smoke cigars, drink way too much whiskey, become a complete and utter misogynist. No, it means actually that he did have a few things going for him that many of us just do not have in our lives today. Business today is so much different to how business used to be. And not all of it is productive. Not all of it is effective. Not all of it is good for us. Not all of it is conducive to having success. We may have a lot of convenience in the modern world that maybe our 1950s fat cat counterpart didn't. However, what he did have in place were rules. He had boundaries. He had barriers. He had blocks. He had guards. He had organization. He had time. He had space. He had support. And I want to share with you how you might want to bring some of that into your day-to-day life so that you can start to find the time that you need to in order to implement all those things we've talked about at the beginning of this episode, but also to take that time to maybe develop yourself personally. You know, the personal development that we need that's so important to us so that we level up as individuals, so we can level up as business owners and then our business can level up as well. It all takes time and I get it. For many of you, time is in short supply, especially right now. So what can we learn about our 1950s fat cat? Well, first of all, I want you to picture what that scene looks like for a moment. I want you to picture an office. It probably smells a little bit like stale cigars. There might be a cigar on the go right now. There's a drinks cabinet. Can you imagine such a thing in the office? There's also a big, lush leather desk, a big chair, and maybe a view over a city. The bits that are really important, however are not those things. What's important is there are walls to that office and there's a door to that office and that door is shut. On the other side of that door, there is a Rottweiler of a gatekeeper, a personal assistant, who he doesn't truly necessarily value. He might ogle her, he might objectify her, he might not necessarily truly respect and understand the importance that she plays in his life. Of course he might. But I'm talking about the stereotypical 1950s fat cat that maybe we all are picturing right now. She holds the rest of the world back. 
She holds his diary. You don't get in his diary. You don't get to speak to him. You don't even get to write to him without going through her. She protects him. She safeguards him. She organizes him and she keeps him on track. In that office, that space of tranquility, he can work on one thing at a time. He has his 9.30 appointment. He then has his 10 o'clock appointment. He then might have his afternoon break. He comes back. He has some afternoon appointments, going into his lunchtime meetings, followed by some time again for himself, followed by his afternoon appointments. These might be phone calls. These might be face-to-face meetings. They might be meetings out at a cigar shop or a bar somewhere. So let's take away the alcohol, the misogyny, the objectification. Let's remove the cigars. Let's remove some of that weight. (laughs) And let's just, for a moment, think about how he ran his day, how his days run for him, how he's protected, and look at how our life is in comparison. We wake up into chaos. You may have a small office. Many small business owners work from home. Chances are there's no boundaries to that office. Anyone can just walk into the living room where you're working or the kitchen where you're working or your office where you're working. Anyone can walk into your office if you have an open plan office and a few members of staff. You know, we went through this whole evolution of open plan offices and open door policies. I can tell you now that actually they've been proven time and time again to be completely counterproductive in efficiency and effectiveness. We have email, completely incredible is the opportunity we have now to reach out all around the world in a moment. Phones, mobile phones, text, social media to do our own marketing with. We don't need a whole marketing department anymore. We can open up our phone, bang, we can go out there and market to the world. Equally, the whole world can market to us. There's no boundaries, there's no barriers, there's no blocks to that. Our home life and our work life is completely blurred because we're using the same technology for both. Our friends' lunch comes through our social media channels and we get the same ping as we might do when a prospect is posting something of real importance to us. The equivalent of how we live our life, just looking at social media, for example, in 1950s, it would be having no walls, no doors to his office, and it would be literally every single person in his life just wandering in, wandering in, you know, just saying, hi, I just want to remind you about this thing at the weekend. Hi, I just want to remind you of this thing. Hi, this is what I had for lunch. Hi, I'm going to the gym later. Hi, here's my new shoes. Hi, this is the bait. Not only do you hear all the messages from the people who you're connected to, but then you'll also get all the messages from all the people that they're connected to. This is equivalent of someone else walking in who you don't even know who they are saying, I love your mate's shoes. I love what your mate had for lunch. I want you to think for a moment, the chaos that so many of us live in because of the very technology that was created to make life better, more efficient and more effective for us. The truth of the matter is the technology is awesome, technology is brilliant. How we're using it, however, habitually is massively flawed. So I don't want to take you back to 1950s and do away with all of those comforts that we use today that give us a real head start in creating a business all for ourselves. There's so many things now that make it so so much less barrier to entry to become a business owner now, to set up your own business right now. However... It's chaos for many people. And when people start saying to me they haven't got the time, it normally comes down to a few things. One, it's a perception, a habitual response. They just feel like they never have enough time. But if someone actually sat down objectively with them, they would say, actually, you've got a whole load of time. You've then got the person that habitually just fucks about. The person takes three hours to do something that takes one hour. You've then got the person that's doing all the wrong things. Rather than prioritizing the things that are important that get the result, they're letting everything get in the way. You've then got the person who unconsciously puts everyone else's agenda ahead of their own. So they might have an idea of what they want to do for themselves, but as soon as someone jumps in saying, can you, would you, would you mind? They jump to that. The people pleasers. They want to help people, support people. They want people to like them, or they just don't have a very strong agenda of their own, and therefore it's easy to get them pulled off their own agenda onto someone else's. 
You've then got people who are just trying to do too much at the same time. They don't have space. They don't create the space that's needed and required in order to be able to be truly efficient. The people who try and multitask, the people that have their email open at the same time as being on their phone at the same time as trying to draft a letter at the same time as thinking about marketing whilst also doodling on a map about what it is they need to be doing at the weekend whilst also getting interrupted by their partners or their spouses or their children while also getting interrupted by a whole host of other thoughts that they might be having in that moment. And occasionally you find someone that genuinely doesn't have time. They're prioritizing, they're doing all the right things, they're managing the time well, They're creating barriers and blocks. They're sticking to their own agendas. Those people, they genuinely don't have enough time. Guess what? They have to buy back some time, invest some money into staff, into help, into support, into systems or processes to buy back the time that they need in order to continue to grow their business, in order to continue to grow their life. I'm going to be honest with you right now. That is the small minority of the examples that I see. So this episode is really getting you to picture your life today, picture that 1950s fat cat and draw upon some of the lessons that we can learn from how he ran his day. So let's look right from the get-go, the door is shut. He doesn't have an open door policy. People aren't allowed to wander in and out and disturb him and distract him. Second, he has a diary and this diary is protected like gold, ring-fenced, The time is in there and it's absolutely allocated and no one's getting in on that. He also does one thing at a time, working off his diary, working off his today list. He does one thing. He has a nine o'clock, a 9.30, he has a call at 9.45. At 10 o'clock, he does this. Then he takes a short break. Then he does X. Then he does Y. Then he takes lunch. Maybe he takes lunch on his own. Maybe goes and has a round of golf with someone. Maybe he goes and has a lunchtime appointment. He comes back and his secretary has kept all of the noise away from him. She then comes in and with all the important stuff and only important stuff, says, right, we've got this response, this reaction. You need to action this. You need to sign this. She puts it in front of him. He does it. She takes it away from him. She doesn't leave it hanging around, piling around on the desk. He actions it. She goes away. Then he gets on with his afternoon appointments. Maybe there's one or two, maybe there's three people he's desperately trying to get hold of and he'll say to her, you know what? If X, Y, Z call, put them straight through to me. Everybody else, however, gets held back. She takes a message and at designated times throughout the day, she'll come in with those messages, with that post and she'll go through it. There's no direct access. You can't just pop a letter on his desk. You can't just pick up the phone and get him on the other end. You can't just walk into his office. With social media, with technology you use, with environment, especially with many of us working at home right now, even if we've got offices, you don't have anywhere near that kind of protection in place. You're not protecting your diary. You're not protecting your time. You're not protecting your focus. You're undisciplined. You drink less alcohol. You might be arguably a better person, but you're operating in a way that's counterproductive to being effective and efficient. So think in your own life. Think about how can you put your own gatekeeper in place? You might not be in a position to get yourself a PA to vet every call and every email to manage and monitor your social media for you right now. You might have to do that yourself. So how do you put that gatekeeper in? Is it as simple as turning off the phone, turning off the alerts on social media? Is it as simple as putting your phone face down on the desk and putting it on airplane mode? Managing your diary. Do you have a diary? I often say the best diary often resembles a child's timetable at school. They have set places to be at set times and there's space between each of those appointments. Then there's a break, then there's a lunch break and then you have the next appointment, the next class to be in. Everything is quite regimented, it's timetabled. And there's no real fluidity to it. And the child is not expected to squeeze a maths lesson in when there's an English lesson. This is what they do. This is the pattern they follow. And actually, if you remember your own school days, it was relaxed. It was chilled out. You might have had your own stresses and pressures at school like I did. But actually, the timetable wasn't one of them. 
The worst you had was a class you didn't particularly enjoy or a lesson where you had to sit on a table that you didn't particularly get on with the other people. But in terms of the stress of what do I need to do today, what needs to get done today, it was minimal. Maybe not at all. You show up, look at your timetable, be where you were meant to be, do what you needed to do, have the space to then move on to the next one. We don't live our life like that. We're crashing in everything on top of everything else. Home life, work life, it all goes into one big melting pot. Our minds are scattered, our minds are unfocused. The technology just exasperates that by constantly pinging and ponging and flashing and drawing our attention to it. Then we've got our own habits and addictions to checking our email every two minutes, checking our social media feeds every two minutes. So what we need to do is we need to start living our life with some boundaries, with some closed doors on it, metaphorical and maybe even literal. We need to stop the external world crashing through into our working environment, crashing through into our diaries, stealing our time, distracting us from those things that are important. Put in a schedule, put in some routines, put in some barriers, some blocks, protect your diary, protect your time, be on your agenda, set your goals, take the time out at the beginning of the day to set up your agenda for the rest of that day or the night before, lay out your agenda. On Sunday night, lay out the week agenda. Begin the month, plan the month ahead. And when you put something in your diary that's important, that's on your agenda, business or otherwise, then carve it out of stone. Don't let anything come in and crash into that. Don't get pulled off into other people's agendas. Create flexibility in the diary so that you do have the flexibility to serve others, the flexibility to do what other people want you to do that's on their agenda, but build it into your agenda so it's part of your agenda. If you start to put these boundaries in place, if you start to put these routines in place, start putting in this timetabling, this theme of diarising in place, you will start to find that you have much more time than you thought you did. Now, you might not necessarily suddenly have loads of gaps in your diary. What you'll realise is you're just so much more productive with the time that you have, that you find that you can get so much more done in the time that you allocate. And then you need to start prioritising. And if your sales needs advancement, if your personal development needs space, if you need some time out, if you need an afternoon nap, then make sure you put that in your agenda, you put that into your diary and you treat that with the same respect as you would a potential prospect. If you start doing this, you'll start to not only do what you need to do today in order to keep and maintain what you have today, but you'll find that you have the time and the energy in order to invest yourself in what you need to do in order to create the business and the life that you want of the future. If you genuinely don't have enough time then you need to seriously think about investing in buying back some time for yourself. Outsourcing, hiring people in order to give you the time so that you can invest the time the way you need to. But be honest with yourself. Be objective with yourself. Look in the mirror. Drop your guard. No one's watching. Drop your bullshit. No one's listening. It's just you and yourself. Are you really struggling to find time? Or are you just being really bad with the time that you have? For most people, if we're really honest, we're just not utilising and capitalising the time that we have. And therefore, we end up in this incredible rat race. We end up in this hamster wheel. It feels crazy. It feels busy. I feel like I'm nonstop. I feel like I'm exhausted. And yet, when I look at what I've achieved, it doesn't seem to be that much. How can Richard Branson run all of his empire in seven minutes It takes him seven minutes a day when he's on holiday. He spends more hours on that, I promise you, when he's not. But on holiday, he can run his empire on seven minutes a day. Yes, he has loads of people there to pick up the slack. Loads of people he offloads to. But I promise you, he does it by being on his agenda, by prioritising, by making sure he sticks to that agenda, and he really does live his life a lot like that 1950s fat cat. Where can you learn to? Where can you implement some of this? You might not be able to do all of it straight away, but I get it. You know, the two big things we always hear, I haven't got enough money to do X. I haven't got enough time to do X. If you haven't got enough money, you need to make more money. How do you make more money? You sell. You sell more for more money. That's it. You raise your prices and you raise your sales game. I haven't got time for that. Right, we need to find time for that. We need to find the time, make the time, create the time. And if we genuinely don't have the time, we need to buy the time back. So we reinvest it 
in what we need to in order to create the business, the life, the future that we want to live into. Take the time you need to in order to create the time you need in order to create the space and the opportunity to really push your business forward. For 10 years now, at Bigger, Brighter, Bolder and through our success groups, we've been helping business owners with issues just like this. So if you do struggle with time, struggle with boundaries, struggle with sticking to your agenda, I get it. We've seen it many, many times before. I've personally mentored some 500 small business owners. So I promise you, you are not alone in your own struggles. If you feel like going it alone is just really challenging right now, it's a real struggle for you, then don't forget, we have groups of ambitious business owners just like you waiting for you to be a part of their environment. They're there to support you, to help you, to encourage you. They're there to kick up the ass when you need it to help you lick your wounds when maybe you need to. There to give you inspiration, there to give you ideas, to support you, to keep you on the straight and narrow. We're there to help business owners set the right goals, stick to those goals, stick to their agendas, stay motivated, stay positive, to really understand what makes them tick so they can increase their own productivity, to increase their fulfillment of life, to become better business owners, better people if you like. If you really feel like you want to take yourself to the next level, to take your business to the next level, then please do go and check us out at biggerbrighterbolder.co.uk. If you're ready for conversation, my partner in life and business, Tracy Miller, would love to speak to you about your ambitions, what you're trying to achieve, and how we can support you on that path. You can email Tracy at tracy with an e.miller at biggerbrighterbolder.co.uk. I'll drop both of those links in the descriptions as well as some links to other resources to help you on your ongoing entrepreneurial journey. I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, as always, be successful. Leveling up. Extreme business growth through raising your game. When what was once extraordinary becomes ordinary, you know you've leveled up. 